Hi, all. Um, so we're entering in the seventh week. I want to do a quick introduction to neoclassicism and uh, then say a bit about the art analysis, and that's all it's going to be. So this will be a quick uh, video. Uh, neoclassicism is, if you're following along, I'm on page 122 in the workbook and page um, 360 in your textbook. And neoclassicism is from 1750 to 1825. And uh, the, the sentence, the phrase that I have that describes neoclassicism is the art of change. And as what that means is, uh, and we talked about romanticism and realism uh, last week. And uh, these are art periods still where it's the themes are as important or more important than literally the techniques that are being developed and the tools and the technology. Uh, so uh, neoclassicism is all about what the artists are representing. And it's titled The Art of Change because this was a time where there was revolution, there was uprisings, there was, uh, the world was changing. And so the artists capture this and they capture it with the theme of patriotism and um, uh, uh, country. Uh, so let's see, it's, uh, and as a matter of fact, neoclassicism is in response to Rococo, where, and I'm just going to read the sentence because it says it best, the art period replaced the eroticism and frivolity of Rococo style with orderly and serious characters. And so the influence of the time, the Declaration of Independence, the French Revolution, the rise of Napoleon, these were all kind of represented the thinking of the time, the zeitgeist of the time. And the artists were capturing this on canvas. So you had inspirational themes. It reflected the revolutionary themes, patriotism, and honorableness. Uh, and is very anti-aristocratic. So the frivolousness of the Rococo didn't make sense anymore. They were really serious and down to business. Um, unemotional, sternly heroic. Those are the ways that it's described. Uh, artists during this time, you have an example, actually, uh, Jacques Louis David. Uh, is shown a lot during this art period as someone who really reflects this time period. Uh, and in your textbook on 361, you can see the Oath of Herate. Um, and I always laugh about this because you got the father that you got the three sons and they're like, give me my sword. I want to go kill someone. He's like, here, I need you to go out and kill somebody or do something with these swords. And they're like, yeah, I want to do this. And of course, the women who are always the same one in the group. They're like, you know, you're an idiot. You're leaving your wife, you're leaving your home, you're leaving your family, your dog, your cat, um, to go kill something. Like, get over yourselves. But that's not what this time was. And um, so David um, represented this era very well in the in the works that he did. Uh, you have uh, Angelica Kaufman, uh, Mings, Gerard, Francois Gerard, John Trumbull, Rembrandt Peel. Um, the art that you're going to, uh, your reflection for this week is uh, the uh, death of Socrates. And um, that's actually a perfect uh, painting for this time as well, because Socrates was, t was a, a teacher and a philosopher. And he was saying things where the state, the government, the leaders, we're like, we really don't like what you're saying. It doesn't go with our religious teaching. It doesn't go with what we want the people to know. It really goes against what, what we think and what we believe. And by the way, we need you to change what you're saying. And Socrates, Socrates being an idealist and someone true to his values said, no, that's not the truth. I can't teach what's not the truth. I can't preach and tell people what I don't believe and what I also know is not the truth. And he said, I'd rather die. And they're like, okay. And so they uh, put him in prison and uh, gave him uh, poison and said, fine, die. If you're not going to change, then we need you to not be around anymore. And he, and so this is, it shows Socrates going down, preaching, teaching, you know, to his disciples. And it wasn't religious. This was academic education based, but he's like, teaching to the very end, like, this is the truth. This is how it is. And as he's about ready to drink the poison and die for his beliefs. And that really, that's neoclassism, uh, showing instances where people were willing to die uh, for their beliefs. So 
That is uh, neoclassicism. Now you can finish your quiz. I believe it's quiz number two, uh, right? And um, then the only other thing, and so you have, we've done romanticism, realism, and uh, neoclassicism, so you should be able to complete quiz number two, and it's in your lesson for this week, uh, week number seven. The only thing that I wanted to comment on further is uh, the video that you're going to watch, OK Go. I love OK Go because they... Um, utilize the media of the internet really well. They do multiple platforms, multiple ways of reaching out. The, the way they express themselves touches you in uh, a lot of different ways. And matter of fact, I even asked you to describe what are three different types, art styles that they pulled on in this one video. So uh, I'll be anxious for you to answer that. But the other thing that uh, I'd like to go ahead and give you insight on, and, and so you can comment in your art analysis, is um, the, the illusion of art. At the very beginning of the semester, I talked about the illusion of art, and OK Go is really a great example of this. So I, hopefully when I talked about the illusion of art, I talked about that you know you think you see the Mona Lisa, a woman on the canvas looking out at you, when in essence it's simply paint on a canvas. That's it. It doesn't weigh anything. It doesn't, there's no volume. There's no mass. There's no depth. There's no background, foreground. It's just paint on a canvas. But artists uses different visual elements to give you the illusion, to make you feel like you're looking at a woman, that that's what you see. And even to how much she weighs and her class and her intelligence and what she's thinking. And these all are the illusions of art. And OK Go does a really nice job in this. And if you wanted to try to uh, critique, appreciate what they're doing, then you would think about this. So in this video, they um, are creating music. They've imagined what it would look like to create music with different unconventional instruments. As a matter of fact, they even go a step further that they're creating the music by driving a car. So the piano riff is a bat out the window that's hitting the piano keys or a riff on a guitar by, once again, a stick hanging out of the car window that's going along the guitars, uh, hitting the cymbals or pots or pans or whatever to give you the banging. The drums are um, plastic drums that a uh, rubber mallet's hitting. And they imagined what this would look like to create this song, the music of this song. My question to you is how much is recorded on site and how much is done in the studio. And I will tell you, the and, and you're going to say you hope 100% was done on site because that's what the video is about. That's what they were trying to create, and they did a nice job, and so you want to believe that. When the fact is that maybe 95%, maybe even more, was done in studio. And... Um, and when you hear that and you think about it, hopefully you're like, oh, I really wanted 100% done on site because that's what they portrayed. And that means they did a nice job of trying to give you the illusion that that's what they were doing. But it's simply not the case. And so I would like you to just look at that, comment on it, give your thoughts around it. Make sure that all your posts are at least 150 words uh, or more. And the reason I do that is so you just don't put, yeah, it was great. Or some simple answer. The whole point of online is that you're thinking, articulating, expressing, sometimes commenting on each other's work. And uh, so that's the 150 word uh, requirement. So that's this week. Next week should be a pretty easy week. Uh, and then we have spring break after that. So I look forward to seeing your submissions. You guys have a great week. And we will uh, see you online.